We continue our journey of all 32 teams talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Remember last year when the uh, Steelers looked amazing in preseason and they had like six drives and six touchdowns or something. And uh, that obviously didn't play out how we thought. Uh, it's been the complete opposite for this preseason. They have not looked very good, uh, quarterback looked, play especially. I remember watching one of their preseason games last year because I was interested in Kenny Pickett because I have him on a dynasty team. And and it's like – and I think they played most of the first quarter or first half, and they were like a machine. I'm like, oh, my God, good. You know, Kenny Pickett, yeah, good job. And then he, then they suck, you know, and so somehow still made the playoffs, and uh, uh, they won ten games, I believe, uh, in in twenty twenty three. Amazingly, I think they made the playoffs, right? Um, they went ten and seven. Amazing how that. No, they, I think they missed out on the playoffs. I thought they made it. I know they won ten. They did win ten games, so. Um, yeah, I don't know. But either way, it was impressive to even be in that conversation and uh, in the toughest division in football right now. I think all those teams were uh, over 500. So, um, you know, they, they made the playoffs. They lost to the uh, Buffalo Bills. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Um, I thought they did. I couldn't remember if that was – I think that happened like two years in a row or something. But anyways, we are recording this uh, August 23rd, so you'll see this closer to the end of August. Keep that in mind. Everything's half PPR, all these numbers and points per game and ADP. Uh, Steelers are – I'm not – I don't know what to, what to think. Um, Russell Wilson is probably going to be their starting quarterback, although he's been injured basically the entire training camp. They think they, he's going to play this weekend. Um, so – uh, there's that to look forward to, I guess. That offensive line is the biggest concern. It's terrible right now. And that makes me – lead me to believe that. I think Justin Fields is going to start more games than Russell Wilson this year. So, I, mm-hmm. Russell Wilson, I know his, like, straight numbers where they looked okay and stuff like that. Like, you look at his numbers, like, oh, you know, 26 touchdowns and, and eight interceptions. And I know, as you can see, um, I think he was a top 12 quarterback. He was 16th in points per game. I just, I just think there's a chance he's just not really good anymore. He's not even being drafted. Actually, Justin Fields is being drafted before him. Russell Wilson's ADP is 217. Uh, Justin Fields' ADP um, is 189. So, um, I don't know. For both these guys, I have no interest if Russell Wilson's the starter. To me, he's in that streaming category with guys like Derek Carr, who's like, all right, in week seven, when I need a, a QB replacement, I'll look at the waiver wire and maybe start Russell Wilson. So um, is there anything really to add to that about Russell Wilson or do you? No, I mean, um, yeah. If you probably just look at what he did with the Broncos last year and fantasy wise, it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't, lights out or anything like that. And and that's what I think um that's what I think you'll you'll get out of Russell Wilson if he's starting or you know they're still they're still talking about it. Pro football talk had a had an article about it this morning whether he's gonna start or not. And you know as far as fields he I mean um you, you know you're gonna get some rushing yards and stuff. So that's that you know, that rings up fantasy points, you know, for the quarterbacks pretty quick. So, yeah, I mean, if it's Fields, I'm definitely interested because, like, Fields can throw for uh, 2,500 yards and be a top 10 quarterback, you know, because of the rushing. And I think they need someone who can rush the ball um, with this offensive line. It's it's terrible. Like, Russell Wilson can't be running for his life, although he did – uh, produce a solid rushing floor last year, Russell Wilson. But um, I don't know. I'm just not excited about him. Uh, if, if Fields is not the starter, if it is Fields, I'm I'm in on it. I was kind of. I think I said all the way back in like March or whenever Russell Wilson went to the Steelers, I was like, I everyone's just crowning Russell Wilson as the guy, and I was like, I think Justin Fields has a chance to be the starter or at least take over. Um, now that wasn't accounting for the injury that Russell Wilson was going through, so they're going to give Russell Wilson the chance. 
the only caveat or like the only thing that's not in my favor in terms of this prediction that Justin Fields doesn't start more games is we talked about it. Steelers won 10 games last year with, with Mason Rudolph, Mitch Trubisky and Kenny Pickett. Like they're probably going to continue to win games and maybe they don't bench their quarterback if they do. So um, I don't know that that's kind of it. You see the fields numbers there. The guy's a, he's a top 20, 12 quarterback, despite having the most, his most passing yards in the season is like 2,500. So it's because he can run for 1,300 yards or something ridiculous. Um, but he's a waiver wire guy if he gets the starting job at some point. Um, Najee Harris is still here. I think that's – I accidentally put Jalen Warren's picture there for Najee Harris. But uh, Najee Harris is here, um, and uh, he's going in round six. ADP six overall is the RB24. You see the numbers there. Um you know, he was a top 10 running back his rookie year when Ben Roethlisberger was dumping the ball off to him 75 times. Uh, he was okay in 2022. In both 2022 and 2023, he had end-of-year stretches where he was like a top 15 running back. Um, he's not explosive. He seems to have lost weight. Um, he's going to get some volume here. I'm actually okay with Najee Harris here um, as RB24. I'm not excited about it necessarily, but I'm okay with it. Arthur Smith generally has good runny, rushing teams. Um, are you in the same boat here? Okay with uh, Najee is kind of your – probably your RB3 at, at, at best. Um, you okay with that? I, I, I think so. You know, it's a strange um, – it's – yeah, it, things are kind of strange with Najee. And, um, and like you said, he – you know, he's been a thousand yard rusher and, um, you know, he's got, you know, he had eight touchdowns last year and, and everything else. So, you know, he, he, but he just doesn't seem to dominate or something, you know, there's just something, something, something kind of missing, lacking. I don't know if it's speed. He's a big guy. He's like 230, 240, you know, and, um, you know, Alabama running back, you know, we just thought um, things are going to be better. But, I mean, he's going to get the ball, you know. He's going to get the touches and um, and stuff like that. So, and um, I know Jalen Warren's up and coming and everything else. But, you know, Najee, sixth round, yeah, that's probably uh, that's probably a good good place for him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean he's he's in that range of guys like DeAndre Swift, Zamir White, Najee Harris. Like those three are going in that sixth round area, and I'd probably take Najee over all both those guys. DeAndre Swift's an interesting one because he's like the complete opposite of Najee. Like he's explosive, can do it with minimal touches. Not sure if you can rely on him season in and season out of of taking two hundred and fifty, two hundred and eighty touches. Um, you know, so he's in that range, and and I'm okay with it. Again, not super excited, but um, this this backfield because Jalen Warren is the other guy here who um, was kind of the one B. He wasn't the backup; he was like the one B to Najee. I think he outproduced him in PPR actually in points per game. Uh, he's going around seven, so around later, 83rd overall. So he's going 15 pick, picks later, about a round and a half, a little bit less than a round and a half later. Um, it, this backfield kind of reminds me a little bit of like the Chargers when they had Melvin Gordon and, and Austin Eckler, um, where you know clearly Eckler was a little bit more explosive and and efficient, and but they still fed the ball to Melvin Gordon. So um, now he does have a hamstring injury, Jalen Warren, and I heard someone talking. I think on it was on the CBS Fantasy podcast. They had an injury expert and basically saying like the hamstring is really important, especially for these fast explosive guys. Cause it's that um, that's the muscle that you're using, you know, guys like Gibbs and Warren. Um, so that's something to monitor uh, for sure. Cause it's one of those things where you just have to rest and you can't rush back or else you re aggravate it. Um, so he could be limited the first couple of weeks for sure. And uh, that could favor Najee a little bit. How about Warren? Are you okay with Warren here? Who would you rather have Warren or Najee, you know, Najee, uh, 68th overall, Warren, 15 picks later, 83rd overall. I think Najee, you know, that's just my preference. You know, I understand Warren 
you know, looks like a running back and stuff. Not Najee's like an 18 wheeler, you know, and, and stuff like that. And Warren kind of looks like a sports car. So, um, but I, I like, um, I like, I like Najee. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, they're going to run a lot and they, they seem, you know, um, the coach, the offensive coordinator, you know, he's uh, the Titans and the Atlanta head coach. You know, you know, you can throw him in the Mike McDaniel, um, Kyle Shanahan, you know, that their teams run and stuff. So, mm -hmm. so they're going to get opportunities, probably both of them, you know. But I, yeah, I, and my preference would be Najee. Yeah. I mean, you just look at Tyler Algier last year. He had 186 carries. Um, yeah, the second running back, you know, behind Bijan, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and Bijan had 215. I could see a split like that 215, 220 for Najee, 180 for Warren. And, um, you know, the, the, the key is Warren's probably going to get more catches, um, but Najee's probably going to get more touchdowns. So it kind of balances each other out. I'm kind of okay with both these guys, assuming Warren is healthy and ready to go. Um, just because if one goes down, hopefully they give the, the workload to the other. So there's always like, I think both are going to be like roughly where they're being drafted at, you know, low end RB2 for Najee, kind of a flex play for Warren. And then they have that upside of if the other one gets hurt. So uh, and you don't really get that upside with, you know, Zamir White, with DeAndre Swift, with, um, you know, uh, Javon, maybe Javante, I don't know, but, uh, you know, other guys in that range, Devin Singletary, you don't get that upside as well. Like you're getting production and upside. So, um, yeah. And they'll probably work in Cordell Patterson as well, who's on the team um, and is going to get touches because Arthur Smith likes him. Um, now, George Pickens is, is, is the big one here. Um, <laughs> everyone's expecting a huge – breakout season because he's the only guy really like they drafted uh roman wilson but he's been hurt i don't even know if he's back at practice or not yeah um, i'm not sure either to tell you the yeah. truth yeah he got hurt pretty early on their their wide receiver two is van jefferson their wide receiver three is calvin austin just you know players professional wide receivers but like no one to really be worried about your your target hog and deontay johnson is gone um Oh, I just see uh, Roman Wilson could start the season on IR, so there's that. Um, so it's, oh, it's kind of all, it's all pointing to George Pickens. Now, I've never been the biggest George Pickens fan. Um, but you just look at last year. Yeah, he had 1,100 yards, and that translated to wide receiver 33 in point in total points or sorry points per game because he doesn't get a lot of catches. Or touchdowns. At least he hasn't in the beginning to begin his career. You kind of need 1,100 yards is nice, but if you're doing that with 60 catches and five touchdowns, it's not even you know you're a wide receiver three. You need to get like 80, 90 catches or eight, nine touchdowns to get into that wide receiver two territory. I just don't know if Pickens can be this number one alpha receiver receiver on the outside kind of. Um, you know, being that number one receiver role, and we think this offense is going to suck, but I can't ignore that he has all the opportunity in the world, right? And he's going as in round five as a not even a top 24 receiver. So I don't know. It, maybe I'll take a shot on him sometimes, but I'm not in necessarily in the boat where I think he's going to have this huge breakout. I think he can do similar to what he did last year with maybe a couple more touchdowns and so hopefully some more catches. So, um, are you – where are you at with Pickens? Are you a little bit higher on him in terms of just he's the only guy again? Yeah, I, I understand that. It's just um, – I, I think based upon that, you know, the, their wide receiver room, it's it's kind of it's kind of thin, as you pointed out. You know, those are – I know they were trying – they were in the Brandon Ayuk uh, – sweepstakes and that didn't work out. And um, I mean, that would have changed a lot of things, but as far as his, his pickings go, I mean, being the only guy, you know, is that that's a big feather in his hat. So that's something 
that you should pay attention to for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think, I think I would, um, I don't like them, you know, for some reason. I don't know. It's just kind of a, acts like a punk wide receiver. And there's few of them out there, but I don't know. Um, I'm an old man, so it's kind of like get off my lawn type stuff. But um, I, I got to consider them for, you know, for fantasy. And, you know, round five, that's where he's going. That's um, approximately, that's, I think that's not a bad deal. Yeah. Yeah, and you're kind of getting him. I'd be very surprised if he's much worse than wide receiver 26, which is where he's being drafted at. Unless – yeah, I, I would just be very surprised because he's literally the only guy, you know, like he really is. So at the receiver position. So I, I would be surprised. So in that sense, like, yeah, I should be in more in on him. I guess I'm just a little bit hesitant about – him being, you know, this like at the end of the year, next year we're taking him in round three or something because he had a fifteen hundred yard season. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. So, um, Pat Fryermuth is an interesting one. Uh, came onto the scenes his rookie year and put up good rookie tight end numbers. I think it was a disappointment uh, in year two. So year one, he he caught sixty passes for five hundred yards and seven touchdowns. Those are good rookie wide receiver tight end numbers. And then 2022, he caught 60 passes, 700 yards, but only two touchdowns. And then last year, um, only 30 catches for 300 yards. Uh, did miss time, I believe, four or five games. Now we're at a situation where he's with Arthur Smith, who loves his tight ends. Um, and uh, he could be the second targeted, most targeted player on the team, maybe even the first over Pickens, which is what you're <laughs> looking for for tight ends. He's all the way down in round 11, tight end 15. It's a very interesting situation and, and um, kind of a setup here for Pat Fryermuth. Um, now, how they're using him in preseason is they are uh, rotating a lot of tight ends in, like Arthur Smith did in Atlanta with Kyle Pitts, Jonu Smith, and um, the other – there was another um, – tight end there that they rotated in um Miko Pruitt who's on the Steelers by the way um they seem to be doing that with with Pat Fryer it's Pat Fryer me Darno Washington and Miko Pruitt you know coming in so that's I'm still willing to take a shot here I like to wait on tight end I like to find guys because half the tight ends that finish in the top eight are coming from you know eight guys that you're drafting around 10 11 12 you know almost every year it's like it's like um it's like clockwork, you know, Sam Laporta was one of those, um, one of those last year uh, where guys that you're drafting uh, super late. Uh, there was another one, I believe, I think David Njoku was another one of those. Like it's almost every year that you get, you know, a lot of guys that are coming. I think Pat Frymuth could be one of those. There is a little bit of concern though with, are they going to use him? And is he going to be the main guy? If he is kind of a, a big opportunity here for, for Pat. Pat Fryermuth. Are you okay with Fryermuth as your uh, tight end one if you wait until round 11, 12? Yeah, I think so. And, um, I, you know, he had a little bit of an off year last year. I think he got injured uh, either early in the season or in training camp. And, he, he, you know, and I think the quarterback situation in Pittsburgh didn't, didn't help the situ, you know, didn't help his situation at all. But, you know, um, I think I think Friar Muth is um I think he's um a good pickup, you know, good good round 11 uh, tight end I would say. Yeah, and again, that that's what I'm looking for is to be able to wait until this late and still get a tight end that I think could theoretically lead the team in targets or be number 2. I love it. You know, like that's what that's what I want. You know, you look at the guys going after him, Cole Komet, stay away from that tight end room they're using multiple guys luke musgrave we're not even sure if he's the main guy tight end probably is but there's a lot of mouths to feed isaiah likely is a backup tyler conklin you know has been a streamer tight end his entire career hunter henry so you're just you know he's kind of the last guy in that sense that could be a, a slight difference maker but that's it with the steelers not super excited about this team i'm kind of like eh, okay i have warren Najee. I don't want the quarterbacks. 
Um, I'm, I'm okay with Pickens, even though I'm a little bit hesitant or I'm a little bit skeptical of his upside. Um, and then Friar Muth, I'm, I'm happy to have. So we will be back with the San Francisco 49ers in the next show, uh, which is obviously kind of fantasy gold. Um, but uh, appreciate you all. And uh, we will see you in that video.